Hi guys, uh, this is 247 Snakes with our new series. Yeah, pro tips, I think it's called. I don't know, he says it all. Uh, it's our new series. This is the first of the series. So we are getting on with it now because we haven't really had time before, but we're doing it now. Uh, the first one is going to be on substrates and bedding and things like that. This is what we do. Uh, this is our opinions, guys. There are people that may disagree and people that may do things other ways. This is purely what we do. It works for us. So please don't anyone comment saying you, should, you don't do that or they do that or whatever. This is purely what we do. Hopefully you guys can get some information out of it and you know it might help you. If not, it's just a cool thing to watch. Alright, so first is substrate. Obviously there are several things you can use. For our royals we tend to use this paper. Uh, it's not it's it's basically newspaper without the print on it. Uh, I really like it. It's tidy. It can you, every time something poos or something, you just take put a new sheet in. Mm. You don't have to change aspen and things like that. Yeah. I did used to, I did used to use aspen for royals, but um, people people still use it. It is a good substrate, but on the scale that we keep royals at, it just gets too much all the time. And this is really easy to clean you've got to make things as effective as effective as possible and this is the best way to do it it holds humidity when they're in shed you can dampen it down and it it really does hold humidity quite well um, also for hatchlings we use normal kitchen towel uh, it's softer than the paper and it's um, we use it because it can dampen down and it's easy to change and things like and that and it helps them shed uh, yeah it helps them, so that's just normal kitchen towel. Uh, people do use, is it the or or orchard branch, the ground bark or whatever, the, the grey stuff. Uh, I've never used that personally. I've heard people that use it, they say it's good. Um, apparently it holds humidity really good, so if you're using it then mm. it's, well, maybe you can comment or do a video on, on that. It's mm -hmm. It seems like a good substrate to use, but we... This is the way we do it, and it's the way that works, so you don't change a plan that works, really, do you? Yeah, I mean, we don't know much about it, but if you guys just want to post a video response or something at the bottom to tell us a bit about it, then that'd be great. Uh, for your cooler breads and things like that, for the hog nose, for the corns, for the king. Um, oh, I am going to get some of that bark for the green tree when I get, or this video might be out, or I might have the snake before this video is out, it depends when Lee uploads it. Uh, I will be using orchard bark for the green tree so if we do already have it and obviously I'm doing the video now because I've been told it's the best thing to use to keep humidity in old moss and that for green trees so I've got that for our cooler breads as I said we use the aspen bedding obviously we buy it in bigger bulks than this most of the time but we ran out yesterday and needed some yeah we was a little short and Liam wanted to go all paradisey on his corn snakes so, so um yeah, well, the reason why I bought small bags is because the pet shop we normally get it from, I can get a big bag, you know, the big bulk bags for £22, and that, that lasts ages. The pet shop around the corner, which is the only one that was open at the time I needed it, wanted £37 a bag for it. No, £35 a bag, nearly £40 for a bag, and I just refused to pay it, so I bought a little bag instead. <laughs> <laughs> just for the fact I refused to pay... 15 quid more hmm. for exactly the same size bag. <laughs> so this is what we use for our cooler breads. It works really good. They can they can bury in it. For my king snake downstairs, he loves it. Honestly, you don't have to put branches or rocks in for him. If you fill this up two, three inches, he will bury in it and you will never see him. Hmm. He, he loves it to bits. Um, it does say snakes recommended for. Uh, on this bag, you know, there's... Dumed brand. Um, obviously, you've got your cooler breads. It does say boas and royals as well. So I, I do know people that use it. They they all get on with it all right. I won't really use it for green trees, to be honest, because it doesn't hold humidity all that well. So I don't know why they've put it. Oh, I don't know. It might work, but I personally won't use it for green trees because it just dries out really quickly. Uh, that's why it's so good for mopping up poo. <laughs> um, oh, something I will talk about, water bowls, 
And we've had a lot of private messages and things, what we use water bowls and stuff like that. For our big snakes, um, we simply use these. Although, yes, it does say cat on it. Although I think if you put a cat in the snake, the chances are the cat won't be alive. Uh, um, these water bowls, they are... I did originally want to get the high ones, you know, the ones they use in the freedom breeders and things like that, but it doesn't really, we can't really find them. So these are good, although they're short, they're heavy, so once they're filled with water, that they don't often get, sometimes they get tipped over, but they don't often get tipped over. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using something this size and really, really light, because I tried when I first got into snakes, and every 10 minutes it was... And it doesn't work. Uh, for the hatchlings, we use the we either use these, which these probably work out best because they're square and go into the corner. Which one uh, don't have a snake in? I don't. I think they've all got snakes in. Uh, just leave it. Just leave it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Basically, what we use for the hatchlings are just like little brown things. Oh, you've tempted me now. Sorry. For the hatchlings, <coughs> we are use we are going to start using the square ones more often. I'll come over to you. We have to move this far. We, we do either them we found these are better because they literally fit square into there and they don't often get moved from little snakes um, but we've only just started buying these so we don't have them for everything yet um, and they are really good for the flat tubs uh, I've noticed these, these rub tubs don't get used a lot in the US I think I've only seen them in one video Mm. But they are they are the best tubs you can use over here. Yeah. And in here, they do actually work as the ones that can't get knocked. When you've got the lid on, there's not really a lot of knocking Leeway. space in there. So when we start mm. using these tubs as hatching wax, which will be in the very near future when I um, when I do another one, um, yeah. So we'll be using them. These tubs, these these are good for adults. Um, they do get knocked over every now and again. The best things to use are obviously the ones that can't get knocked over, but I can't find them anywhere. So these work just as good because they're heavy. Uh, they can put a nice water. You can put a nice amount of water in them. They can get past the. Obviously, adults can't all get in that, but they can soak in it bit by bit. Uh, they can soak in it bit by bit. Yeah, I've said that. I've said that. Um, the next pro tips video next week or next two weeks, depending on how, will be on enclosures and enclosure size. Um, gonna say some some things we've heard, some really funny things we've heard, and um, things like that. So yeah, hope this pro tips video has been a bit screw if it is my first one, guys. So I do apologise if it's absolutely pants, because I will be apologising to myself. Um, but yeah. Next week will be on enclosure size and things like that because people do ask me what size do I use for this and it's kind of obvious. But for people that don't know we are going to do one and I'll see you next week.